Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. And today's show, we have Tom Boyle, CTO at GE Current, a Dane Tree company. Came on to talk about UVC lighting, Greg. That's right. Hot topic right now and the right company to talk to if you want this new technology or, well, newer item that's out there in the market. Talk to those guys. I mean, it's new from the perspective of general deployment, but the idea of it's not so new. What's GE Current got going on? Well, they have this new 365 DIS in FX, D-I-S-I-N-F-X. It looks like a smoke detector. I think you're hmm. going to see it on screen. Scott's probably showing it to you. Five inches in diameter by two inches deep. So it looks like your standard smoke detector that you would have in your house. But it's UVC light, continuous. And why is that important? Because spaces change. People come in and out of spaces. So viruses or, or uh, bacteria will come in and out of spaces constantly. So a lot of the technology that's out there is let's hit it now and then it's clean for the day and then let's hit it again the next day. And this, this is all day, all the time, 24 hours circulating through the air and doing what the purpose of UVC lighting is. GE Corona Daintree Company has the right product and I'm excited about it. I want, I want them to send me a price sheet right now. Let me stock it. I told them that on the show. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm ready to go, Tom. Come on, man. Get those things up here into Toronto. You got to go to GECurrent.com. That's G-E, huh? C-U-R-R-E-N-T.com. GECurrent.com, of course. The National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Yo, come on down. We get, we're we just released, Greg, on Evolve in beta, but it's coming out for everybody soon. 10 UVC modules by the world's greatest expert. Not They're not all by him, but man, this is good stuff. So look out what Nail's coming out with soon. That's NAILD.org. But for right now, Tom Boyle, GE Current at Dane Tree Company. Welcome to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast, Tom Boyle. Thank you guys for having me. Excited to be here. Say hello to Greg Garrick. Hey, Greg. Hi, Tom. Thanks for coming on. Okay. First question. CTO, you're the Chief Technology Officer at GE Current, a Daintree company. Now, does that mean that you run the website or do you actually do the technology of the lamps? 100% focused on product technology. For us, that includes LED fixtures, LED lamps, controls. That does include software, software and controls, embedded controls. Uh, but yeah, the website's uh, left to someone else in the, in the company. <laughs> and how long have you uh, been in this role at, at the company? Yeah, so I'm, I'm officially at my year marker with the company. I've been with uh, GE Current in, at the LED lighting company. Uh, started in 2000 out of college with GE Lighting, but uh, recently in this role for one year. So you're a lighting guy then. And um, that's good because we're all lighting guys. Uh, the, the change from 2000 to today in the lighting business, how would you describe that? Uh, phenomenal, net, net breaking, depending on how you want to phrase it. But really when I started, uh, my journey has been, I was a mechanical engineer, started a lot in our factories, uh, installing equipment, doing automation projects, and the LED, white light LED hit the industry, really then got involved in product design, took various roles of product and technology uh, jobs at that point, uh, all, all around LED, LED fixtures, LED lamps. And from an engineering standpoint, that was a phenomenal opportunity, right? Very, very little efficiency, high cost, and really over a three-year period saw, you know, 800 lumens we were buying at $35 uh, chips going to 70, 70 cents. So that, that was really kind of the 2009, 2015 era. Uh, and then there's a lot of more broader commercialization. I would say technology curves somewhat slowed, uh, but not completely. Then we got into wireless technologies. The industry started to adopt those. And then the thing that I'm most excited about coming back is more of the commercialization of controls, making more robust solutions. And then you know, horticulture products, UV 
lighting products, um, circadian rhythm kind of products that we can really commercialize. And I'll call it the, the next phase of, of lighting technology from my, my personal perspective. Uh, so going from equipment automation, making things more cost effective to LED technologies, now to what I'll call it photon lighting tailoring of uh, solutions in the industry. So yeah, it's been a great journey and love the, love the process. So Greg, I'm going to let you go first. I know we're kind of, Greg and I are kind of fighting for the next question. You go first, Greg. <laughs> uh, so you're, you're working on product development and the technology involved. What were you focused on primarily pre-COVID in terms of what you guys are going to produce and then post-COVID? Yeah, so there's been a, a little bit of change. I would say since 2015, we've really been in in developing UV uh, UV solutions, UVA. But uh, you know, pre-COVID, we were in in our, our full product line, LED controls. You know, we recently spun out and purchased uh, by a private equity. So really getting a controls focused LED fixture company. That, that was that was the, the direction. We're still on that direction. What really changed, Greg, to answer your question specifically on post-COVID is, you know, our ability and science behind what we are working on since 2015 and then taking that and looking at lighting science and seeing that if we could do anything around, around viruses. So I would say it's more of an addition to our product development strategy, then it's been a a subtraction or that we weren't thinking about it. You just have a unique opportunity to expand our our focus on bacteria to to include virus. The the, uh, UVC disinfection, this kind of stuff, okay? Yeah. 220 nanometers, LED, mercury lamps, xenon, pulse xenon. GE has a long history of being in the UV space. It's not new for you guys. Correct. Um, you know, and it was similar when we spoke with Signify. They have a long history in this business. And so uh, we've, we've, Greg and I have had the honor of speaking to some of the world's experts when it comes to, you know, the use of UVC technology as a uh, addition to a, a, a disinfection strategy for whatever space. Um, do you see this for, from GE's perspective, do you see this as something centered in the lighting business or is it something that is outside the lighting business? That's something different. Do you understand what I'm asking you? Yeah, I think, I think it's both. And and I'll give you my kind of, my kind of perspective on that. I think we, you know, our lighting background allows us to really understand this. And you're absolutely right. Signify is the same way. We're we're the same way. There's other lighting manufacturers. We've been in this. If you look at discharge lighting, you know, that's seventies, right? So we had, we had 50 years of experience on this and Hey, is it, is it nuanced? Yeah. But in terms of the fundamental science, we've been in this game for a long time. I think there's a lighting element but in terms of UVC specifically, we're thinking about it about more cleaning air, you know, being able to, to clean the air. Uh, and that's just part of the element. So where we can put it into systems that uh, involve the lighting structure or infrastructure, we can do that. But we also see that there's a need outside of outside of uh, what you would say your traditional lighting or combining it in lighting. And, and what I mean by that is we're running into... Hey, you need to socially distance. You need to wear your mask. First is to look at air solutions, HVAC solutions, but there's limitations or cost. And then we think this could be layered on. could be part of your lighting infrastructure, but could also be in part of your, your ceiling infrastructure, just like you think about sprinkler systems or HVAC systems. So I think it's both. Is, um, Greg, I know you're ready to go. Let me jump in here real first because it kind of dovetails onto this. Um, people don't really know what anybody's talking about right now. And that's from the customer to the distributor level. Okay. Now, you know, when I've spoken to somebody, they said, they said, this is not a science issue. This is, this is not even an engineering issue. This is a deployment issue. We just need to deploy this in the field outside of the 220 nanometers stuff, which 
Um, we'll talk about, I think, in a minute. But the the idea of upper air of passive upper air disinfection, so like lights inverted and the air circulating through a space, they've been doing this for a long time. Um, okay. It's not new. What is it that you think is the angle that is really going to be most effective for the general environment, schools, commercial buildings, you know, bath uh, washrooms and bathrooms in the, where public go and stadiums. What, what do you think is going to be the, is it the sanitization of um, the disinfection of things? Is it the disinfection of upper air passively, actively? What do you think is going to be the main play? I think it's a, a layered approach. I would say, you know, from your comment about this is a deployment challenge. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. I also think, though, there's an education element of this. And then from our perspective, there's a technology play here. Because as you said, the upper air systems, older technology, it, it has certain applications or usage. What we're trying to deploy is really using LED technologies that can be used in a, a, continuous, a continuous mode that are below the safety regulations. So that's where we're really focused on, and it's a layered approach. It's, hey, there might be, I'll give you examples. There might be in a, in a factory, upper air might, might be the right solution. In a hallway or an entryway, we think that's a good example where a low dose UVC product like we, we've been talking about in the space could be applicable. And it's deployment, it's education, and it's this merging of LED technology with the, the science to inactivate you know, pathogens is, is where we really think there's something new and novel in this space that we can, we can provide us better solution. Now, we, we recorded a podcast, maybe, Mike, if you remember, a year or two years ago about disinfecting light fixtures, and, and it was from another manufacturer. But at that point, I remember looking around after I had that podcast to see who had anything out there that made sense. And you guys have had this, is it LBU? Uh, yeah, trough? LBU. And how long yes. has that been around? We launched it in the summertime. Of this year? June of 2000, uh, yeah, 20. We've been doing pilots uh, as early as 19 in, in various hospitals. Okay. Uh, did you have another disinfecting type fixture before that? Maybe not this LBU. Not, maybe not in the LED main. space. Yeah, not in the LED space like you guys mentioned. Uh, we've had germicidal lamps for a long time, but really the, the LBU space, LED-based technology, you know, started research and development in 15 product pilots as early as, you know, 18, 19, and then officially for commercial in, uh, in this year to 2020. Okay. So I might've been aware of the, the pilot portion, but the, now that that's UVA. So we, we've talked a lot about UVA, UVC and all the different types, but why did you guys start there and why are you going to UVC now? Or what are your benefits of each kind of break that down for us? Yeah, it's a great question. UVA is, what we found through the research is very effective on bacteria on surfaces. Uh, you know, the, the SARS COVID-2 virus and, and some of the research that we've looked at is more of an aerosol uh, type risk or exposure. And when you get into viruses that are in air, wavelengths, you know, 250 and below can be more effective in activating those. So it's really two things. You got to look at bacteria versus viruses, and then you got to look at air cleanliness versus surfaces. So based on those application differences, we're tailoring solutions to, to be most effective uh, depending on our customers' needs. The so the you have A right now on the fixture and, and your new item is UVC, is that correct? Absolutely right. Okay. And have you had the, uh, the, this, a, wh where have you used the, the LBU fixture? Wh what are some applications that it's common in? Uh, where we started in the hospital space. So that's pretty common. What we found re recently though, it's in many applications. Uh, you know, you, you name it, uh, people, people will, will try it. Y yoga studios, uh, is, is one example, some different, different applications, but we're, you know, started in hospitals, it can be used in various applications that we're seeing, depending on what kind of comfort level people want in their environments and how, how they're using it. 
Comfort level. Oh, I like that one. I like that. Comfort level. So the idea, so we get calls um, quite often now uh, from school boards, private school, mostly schools, I'll say. Right now they want to open and they want their students in class all the time. Um, the comfort level, that's an anecdotal remark and it could mean different things for different people. Is there something that something that we should say as an industry? Is there something, does that comfort level need to be formalized like a CRI, like a, a, a bacterial, uh, you know, pathogen destruction index or something like that? Do we need that in this industry? Oh, that's a, that's an interesting question. So I would say comfort and let me define comfort and confidence of trying to make people uh, have confidence to move on. Uh, I would say in this new normal as an industry, I believe there's a lot of research out there and education. So I don't know if I would immediately go to trying to create a new, a new terminology. Cause I would worry about that. That could create confusion. Uh, you know, I think it's, well documented, and we already industry. have enough confusion. <laughs> believe me, I agree, hundred percent agree. So, what we think about this, and it's evidence, science based, right? What we believe is already out there is really talking about safety. Those IEC standards that have been in place a long time, re-educating people what those mean, uh, being true to staying with those regulations, and then also staying true to what we're actually doing. It's a hygiene, a, an environmental hygiene, not a medical device, not personal safety. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about really staying true to inactivating either an air or a surface on a bacteria and a virus. I think staying true to already definitions that are out there, following CDC, following the science, using organizations like IES to really educate, I think is more important than trying to create something new because you are absolutely correct. I mean, CRI, gamut indexes, all of that, mm -hmm. I, would, I would advocate strong to stay away from that, really stay with terminology as we have, and kind of band together as an industry, try to be leaders and not, not mislead people, stay true to claims, be science-based and evidence-based. That, that's, that's what I'd like to see in the industry, especially being around it for 20 years. So within Nailed, we've launched uh, our a continuous, it's in beta right now, but uh, it's going to go to live soon. We've launched our training program, which does five-minute videos. Uh, Scott, remind me how many UVC videos we have. Nine, unless I change my mind and split one in two. <laughs> right. So we have already have nine or 10 educational videos that we've produced within the UVC space. And, and the people that are, I can just say their names. They wouldn't care. Fred Van Lyrop, Jim Calantoni. Like these are people that if you're in the UVC space, you know, these people. Yeah, um, absolutely. So he, uh, they've helped us with some of that education and in the first nine to 10 videos, we haven't got into anything related to deployment in the field. We're doing pure education on terminology, on different types of technology, how it's used in applications right now, and, and this kind of thing. And, you know, um, UVC light is what the ozone layer protects us from, right? So if we let the UVC light in, we're all going to die. So we have to be very careful about how we do this. On the other hand, and this is going to, I'm going to make a kind of a weird point here. Um, one of the, one of my business, it's going to take a little bit to preface it, but one of my uh, the businesses that I run here is a lamp recycling division. So we recycle waste lamps, right? Yeah. And uh, we also do other things like batteries and, and toner cartridges and all manner of hard stuff. And you know, what's really interesting uh, HVAC air filters are super disgusting. Okay. Nobody wants to touch these things. Okay. They're like, they're not hazardous waste yet. They're not called that, but they're actually like a type of hazardous waste. They are jacked. If you go swab a, an HVAC a filter from a commercial building, you could grow anything. <laughs> okay. 
you, you could probably pick up every single pathogen there is in one of those filters. I don't know if you've ever seen any of these things before with your own eyes, okay? But they are absolutely disgusting. And we, like a, a building, like a large tower will produce hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these a year for disposal. So air is very, very dirty and it's filled with all manner of pathogens, okay? Um, there's an element to this, which is hygiene theater, Okay, there's an element of this that we want people to believe the world is safe and we're going to give them some theater, okay? We're going to show them that, you know, it's like an ox sensor that goes on but doesn't really save that much energy. It's like a part of the theater of energy savings. So there, we can give them the theater. I know that I can put up a light fixture that says UV, that a light's on that says UVC disinfection and the light turns on and people, whoa, they feel good. I know I can do that. Can we actually clean the air? Is it like, can we actually do that and make these spaces less infected with pathogens? So th there is strong research out there that's even a, a decade old. And where we're at, we've modeled those. We're currently, and we've been very clear about this on, on any literature we have, we've, we've modeled it and we're currently in surrogate testing and we will we will validate and prove that before before we release anything into the market. So the science is strong. Uh, we have good models. We'll we'll validate it, and and I believe we're on that we're on that track. I also want to comment on two things that you talked about. There's the HVAC filters that also you know maybe dumped in, and you know my my wife keeps me humble. I still have to change them in my house, so I absolutely know what you're talking about. Uh, the other is all this mask waste. Right, all these disposable masks that are going to be thrown out and built up. So, in terms of you know socially distancing, wearing HVAC or, or installing HVAC, looking at those filters, and then using using photons to actually inactivate or clean the air. There's absolutely rock solid science uh, that that'll be that'll be I think developed, and we're all going to push each other and, and innovate in this space. And, Hundred percent believe in that um, from a from a social aspect, and we'll continue to provide those solutions. And then the last the last point that I, I want to make is it could be a combination of these. And like you said, the application is important. We also, as an industry, have to make sure that these get installed properly, that it's easy to install, and that it's effective to install. So I, I'm excited, and I think partners like yourself to have these podcasts, but also people in the industry and business people like yourself that are able to promote and help people out. You know, our, our product, we just, you pop out a hole in a junction box and you can wire it in. We still have to prove that, but we think it's super simple. An electrician in the field will be able to do that. That's an important element, not only the tech, but that it can be deployed in an economical way that's safe and people know, know how to do it. So all of those elements, I don't know if I answered your question specifically, but I just wanted to kind of add on to what you said and, and really just, you know, snow pile, uh, co compound what you're saying. And I think all of those elements, five or six elements as the industry that we have to do, the research, the science, the installation, really looking at waste. Our, our landfills just aren't getting smaller. And, you know, some of the passion that I've stayed in the industry is, hey, we've always been able to save energy, right? So that allows us to do you know, less, less fossil fuel coal plants in, you know, in, in the world. And you're, you're hundred percent right. The, the mass, the air filters, if we can use photons, the industry can develop longer life UV LEDs. It's going to be much better for multiple elements socially and business wise. I'm going to make a statement and then we're going to go over to Greg. Okay. <laughs> You ready for this? I'm going to tell you something right now. So I had about an hour and a half call with a lady who had a very prestigious private school in Toronto. I mean, we're talking probably cost $100,000 a year to go to that school. We spoke for a long time. And if I would have been able to send her a cut sheet, okay, that said these types of fixtures, it showed a picture of a classroom or whatever with the fixture in it. And it described its uses and all this sort of stuff. And it said GE Current, a Daintree company on it. I think I might have a PO in my hands right now. Greg, over <laughs> to you. 
So I think, uh, you know, I've, I've had some discussions too with uh, customers in the field and just about every time, you know, the question comes up and you, you talked a little bit about it, but it's how can you prove that it works? You know, I get that in, in studies and things, you have a controlled environment where you say, okay, we can do this, but wh what kind of test is there? Is it a, take a swab of uh, the desk before and take a swab after and run it under a lab? Or how do you guys determine that it actually does kills the virus and how can we then relate that to the field in the real world? Yeah, there's, there's labs that do this, right? So then we, we are putting our, our product in it. So that, that part is pretty much well known. I think your question in the end is we're going to have to do real applications and do some follow-up follow-up studies, but I think it is going to be. It, it's you're going to we're going to have to. There's a safety element to this, right? And there's there's an element where you can't. You know, we're not going to inject you know viruses in a in an actual application. So we're going to show where and there's universities behind it. There's actual standard testing labs that do this, third-party labs, and then that's going to show that's going to show the inactivation in the air. And then, and then it goes back to that confidence or comfort level that we're talking about or this layered approach. You know, I don't, I don't have proof that wearing a mask, you know, and socially distancing exposes me more or less, but I, I rely on kind of the science behind it to put me in the best environment that I can be in. I, I view this as that next, that next step forward. Uh, so it'll be a combination of, science and studies, and then it'll be applications and layering and quite candidly put the best environment or solutions in place to allow you to, to come back. And it'll be time before, you know, we can, we can really prove or disprove that. But what we do know is the, the opposite. We know if you're in bars and restaurants, choirs, singing loudly, very crowded spaces, you know, all these universities, we, we know those are, are causing problems. So I, I look at it more of that way, using the science, using good judgment. And then unfortunately, we have the opposite effect where people are kind of violating those best practices that, you know, are causing infection rates. Now, does, does GE still offer the UV fluorescent germicidal or tubes or mercury-based tubes? Yeah, so I do have to just, just clarify a little bit, right? G G Current, a Daintree company, right? That's the, the company we are. We are we mm -hmm. are not offering those germicidal lamps. And then we have a branding we have a branding license uh, through the the General Electric company. So just you know, just no. Make but sure I, 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 I would say thing. that I would say that that's that's irrelevant. That branding license comes with a certain amount of responsibility, which is why you pay for it, right? It's, Correct. It's, it's and if we have that responsibility, and also. The, the engineers and science behind it. So that's where we almost, you know, we almost have an obligation to really step up in the industry and, and make, make science and evidence-based essential. And then that's the first part as we develop these products. So hundred uh, percent see where you're coming from. Ooh. So you guys don't, you guys don't have that anymore. G the license is it up. That, that was the answer you said to the UV lighting. Uh, we are we are currently not distributing and selling germicidal lamps under the G brand. Got it. Okay, and then um, Mercury. Yep. And then in terms of the product that you guys have, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this new one, but it looks like everything you guys are doing is LED based. And we've talked to a number of uh, manufacturers and people that talk about the technology, and some of them say mercury based solutions are still the best, or or you know something other than LED is still the best. Why are you guys focusing all on LED and, and is it the best? Yeah, uh, the best has multiple elements to it. Some of it is focus and strategy. Uh, I would say that the germicidal lamps are, are effective in, in the applications and we, we know that. Our business is really focused on can evolving and being a controls-led LED company. And we, we feel that that's, that's the best focus for our business to create value uh, and to really lead on a technology innovation and where we want to take the direction of the company. So that's uh, that's what we're defining as best is really to use innovation and technology uh, to, to drive this company. And specifically, LED offers us a couple things. We can dose at lower levels. It's, it's hard to control that, that mercury lamp uh, and discharge lamp. And there's also, you know, you guys mentioned it. There's 
there, there's some confusion around that, right? Those lamps are rated at B50 life. That means half those lamps fail at certain things. So really go into LED technology on form factor and able to dose at lower levels is really what we we think is innovative and leading. And we'd rather keep pushing that technology. It complements what we've been doing on UVA. So best for us is business focus and really continue to evolve controls and LED. And that's where we're going to go. You know, we can talk, I could talk all day about germicidal lamps. And as a scientist, I love it. But from a business focus, we're focused on controls and LEDs. So that's my next question then would be, is the, is the UVC technology that you're developing, is it going to be addressable with a system where you could monitor it remotely or, or are you combining that, that, uh, that controls led LED into the LED UVC space? Yeah, a, a teaser for our next podcast. Yes, we will. We will focus <laughs> on controls in, in the combining it with the puck and even UVA in the future. Right now, what we're hearing from the market, though, is people are confused and controls adds another element of confusion. So we, we wanted to come out with this very simple product. You don't need controls. It can be used mm-hmm. for continuous. But in terms of in the lab, in our product roadmaps, we are we are hair on fire developing those products. Hmm. So do we want to talk about this new product or save that for the next one? That's the next one. Save it for the next one. Yeah. All right, yep, folks. All right. If you're listening to this right now, we're going to we're gonna uh, say goodbye for now. And, but before we go, we're going to throw on a little uh, of my friend David Owen's living life. Throw that up for us there, Scotty. Tom Boyle, Chief Technology Officer at GE Current, a Daintree company. Thank you for joining us. I think this is one of three, isn't it? Yes. I'm game for three. I'm looking forward for number two and number three. Thanks for being a guest on the Get a Grip on Lenny podcast. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Greg, gecurrent.com. That's G-E-C-U-R-R-E-N-T.com. They got their 365 dis in effects. Maybe I said that it's a little slower last time, but I think that's how you want to say it. 24 hours a day, UVC lighting running. I got to stock that a little. Thing. Oh, yeah. It's a smoke detector looking item. And where can that go? How about where can it go? In every single application, you can put this thing. And you should think about putting it because you want clean air. You want to be feel safe. What That's does what that nanometers do thing say on that thing? What's the nanometers of it? Two, is it? 255, 255 is the nominal peak wavelength. Scott comes in hot right at the end. Let us start letting Roy everybody Scotty. know. Uh, so it's killing all those bacteria, all those viruses, keeping the air clean, man. Whew. That's important for some applications. You got to sell that thing. Got as a distributor, I think you got to put that on the shelf right now. I think there's people that would walk in and buy it right now. Oh yeah, it's a hot, it's going to be a hot item. I can guarantee you that, and I'm excited for it. So Gecurrent.com. That's G E C U R R E N T dot com, baby. G E Current.com. Of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Greg, come on. We need more members. We don't need them, but they should join. They should join. Of course, they should. Check come out on, the hat. Man. Get on Sign get up. On there. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? This whole thing. Hey, Tom, thanks for coming on the show, man. Really enjoyed having mm-hmm. you on. And, and I think we're looking forward to doing a couple more with them, aren't we? I've got a couple more in the in the hopper, so excited about that. Always good content when you work with GE Current, a Daintree company. Oh, GE Current. Tom, thanks for coming on the show. And for all you listeners out there from my heart of hearts, love you guys. Thanks for listening. I can Bye just now. get on my feet again, but I know I can make it this time, my friend. But till then, well, I guess I ain't living like I should. <laughs>